So now we come to the end of our Easter season. We do so by going back to where we started. Back to Acts chapter 1, starting at verse 1. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the day, times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid them, him from their sight. Gone, 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 gone. That's it. No more. You've had me hanging around here and hanging around there and being with you and being with you and being with you. Time I left. Because we know what happens in John 17, where Jesus says, I have to leave. Jesus has to leave so that the Holy Spirit can walk in. Because if the Holy Spirit doesn't walk in, they're not going to get it. They're not going to give it. The folks aren't going to get it. And the witness and the mission of the church will not go forward. So, he sums, he starts the book of Acts by summing up his gospel, does Luke. And that's why we always end here, because it's Ascension. Now, Ascension is one of those funny holidays where it's a holiday that's not a holiday. In many countries across the globe, it's a, an official holiday holiday. It's a day off. Not here. Matter of fact, we don't even take a holiday around the day of Pentecost. Not here. What is important is this. This is the end of the beginning and the beginning of something else entirely. Now we're headed into the season that will mark all of this mission that will go on and on and on and on and on. Because you'll notice that it is set around Jerusalem, oh, and in Judea, and in Samaria. So now we've gone north and south, runs all the way up the coast, that eastern coast of the Mediterranean, and now then also to the ends of the earth. Now, the definition of that wasn't very big, geographically. Not according to the Roman Empire, because the ends of the earth stretched from the middle of what we call Great, Great, Great Britain right now, the, the Scots border. It extended through all of Europe, continentally, around the corner, over as far as the Tigris Euphrates, around the corner and through those northern countries of Africa that border on the Mediterranean basis, all the Europe. We're not thinking about North and South America. We don't even know they're there. They're not. We're not thinking about anything further, although we've heard that there are things that are further. We have for written 
for instance, non-biblical witnesses that the disciples traveled as far east as India. And that's why for millennia there have been Christians in India. It was Thomas, by the way, according to these accounts, who took the gospel out there. And of course, once it gets to India, then it can move on further into Southeast Asia. But there's not even any mention of any of the peoples that we know that are north. North towards the Urals, north towards the Himalayas, north of the Black Sea or the Caspian. There's no mention of that country. That's way back over there. Kind of like that mountain you see in the background. It's a way over there. That mountain could be about a half hour hike, or it could be more like three to five days. You can't tell. But here we start to expand the ministry. And we keep on expanding it. We keep on doing it. Because we keep on having people who have not heard about Jesus, who have not heard about what we do, who have not heard about who we are, who have not heard about what we get out of this, who have not heard. I was in a clinic about two months ago. And I said to the receptionist, uh, what was to become a whole five-minute discussion? But I said this to her, I want you to have a blessed weekend. Because I just wanted to offer her a blessing. And she looked at me funny because she said, What's a blessing? Now, you know you're automatically in trouble if you don't, if you have a person who doesn't know what a blessing is. So I explained that to her. She said, oh, what do you do? Meaning, what was my job? So I told her that I was a minister. She says, you work for the government. I said, no. I run a church. She said this to me. What's a church? I said, well, it's a building kind of like a mosque or like a, a temple, synagogue. And she goes, what are those? Now, she's 18. Maybe a little older, might be as old as 22. She has no idea. And what she's exemplifying for me is the kind of work we have to do. We spent five minutes where I was pretty much saying something and her asking a whole bunch of questions to go with it. When we got done, I said, have a blessed weekend. She said, you betcha. And she said, come back anytime. So in other words, her soul was open for me to explain to her this concept that we call faith, religion, and what all that means. Obviously, a person who's very much oriented towards what's going on only in my life and not in anything else whatsoever is also being raised, I would think, in a family that has very little social interaction that way, where we only stay with a certain crew of people who are at a certain socioeconomic level and travel in certain places regularly at certain times that, you know, the whole drill. Like, in other words, she's never been out of her nice, tidy, little life. She's never had it pushed, never had it challenged, never known any kind of hardship. The Lord will fix that. Because life will fix that. Life does that to us. Now, hopefully, all that happens is we're going down the road of life like these guys were. And you hit a little speed bump. These guys are not in for a little speed bump. 
what they're going to get is they're going to get we're doing highway speed. And I mean, like headed for Jasper or headed for Calgary highway speed. They're going to come around the corner and they're going to hit a major speed bump. And it's going to take off in a whole different direction. They have no idea about that's where we're headed next. And there's all kinds of amazing things that come out of that. Most of which is, and we return to a whole series of examples through this summer about Jesus and how he's doing the work of ministry in all these different situations. So it helps us be informed about how to do the job. And that's where we're headed next, because it has been nothing but surprise, 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 surprise so far. This is the second biggest surprise they're going to get at this point. Now, you'll notice that Ascension is exactly 40 days after Easter, just like Lent starts 40 days right before Easter. And if you think those 40s are important, yeah, I've got another sermon for you about 40, but never mind. We'll leave that for another day. Pentecost, also by the very definition of it, is 50 days after Easter. We call it Pentecost because penta is the Latin word for fight. And 50 days after Easter, God shows up in a huge way. And we'll start there in our next year. Let's pray. We give you thanks, Lord, that you enter and enter and enter and re-enter again and again in our lives. Help us, Lord, to be prepared so that we are open enough to absorb the changes that come at us. Because has been, as has been observed, change is the only constant in life we have. And so we pray for these things, Lord. We pray for wisdom that we would hear those who are very young and very old, for they are both in those groups very wise. The very young because they have just freshly come from you. And the very old because they have learned it again the hard way through experience and living. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with us on this journey as you take us in places, to people, to spots that we would have never thought of, Lord. That we may be blessed if we are able to truly say, if you had told me this was going to be happening at this point in my life, I would have said you're crazy. Bless us in that, Lord. Help us to understand that, that that can be very much exactly what you intended. Guide and direct us, Lord, so that we can work together through this summer. Give us rest and room to breathe so that our spirits expand and we grow. And we ask us, Lord, to be prepared for the flame and the fire of your Holy Spirit that will show up next week. Because in that power, in that urgency, we have our place in you. All these things we ask now through your son. He was Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And so we close our prayers with the prayer he told us to pray daily. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord.
May the fire of the Holy Spirit, the wind and flame of life, may the power of Almighty God rest upon you and bless you this day and this week. Amen.